Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Martin again after a long time and I'm back with a new video tutorial. Today I want to talk about an advanced mode of the Pinto DMD editor. It is called the Layered Color Mask mode or for short LCM. As you know we have some problems with the color mask and replacement mask, especially when it comes to scenes that have more than one frame. We will notice that it does not run synchronously and the color mask seems to walk behind the original images or certain animations will get disrupted. These errors are due to the differences in the timing, because a pinball machine is not very consistent in the timing of the frames, what means they are not shown for the same time on each game you play. If we have dump files from a VPIN, we have completely different delay times per frame than when recording from a real pinball machine. As a result, scenes with multiple frames will not run properly or synchronously if we only trigger them on the first frame. So far we have been able to solve the problem by dividing the scenes into individual frames using the split scene function and triggering them as separate scenes. Then we had to increase the delay times of the individual frames in order to avoid flickering, especially on real machines. This resulted in huge projects that became confusing and had extremely long loading times. By using the LCM scene this should no longer be a problem. In contrast to the color mask or replacement mask, the LCM scene should be viewed more as a group or a container. All frames of a scene are stored in this container. The LCM scene is activated via a keyframe and remains active until it is interrupted by an external trigger. While it is active, it is searched for matching hashes. With every match, the respective colored frame is activated and remains active until the next match. That's why we don't have to worry about the delay times anymore here. The order of the frames is also irrelevant. There are different ways to add a frame to an LCM scene. First, we can switch an already existing scene to layered color mask mode using the drop down menu. Second, we can create an LCM scene by selecting a frame either in the dump file timeline or in our scenes window and pressing the add to scene button at the bottom. This will create a new scene called new scene with a capital S. If we want to expand a certain scene, we can temporarily rename it to New Scene with a capital S and then add more frames using the Add to Scene button. To set a hash for a frame, we simply need to select it above and hit the Set Hash button. We can check at the bottom of the screen whether the hash has been adapted, but that's what also the check mark next to the hash tells us. Another big feature of the LCM mode is the ability to use up to 25 additional masks per scene to set the hashes. Of course, as always you should avoid to use more than necessary, but I could not find any problems even with full capacity. The special thing about the LCM mode, however, is that it can display different hashes at the same time. This mode is therefore particularly suitable for coloring scenes in which objects appear at certain positions but at indefinite times, such as video modes or slot machine scenes. For this tutorial I have loaded my current Adams Family project because there are some good examples for the use of the LCM. Let's first look at the graveyard scene, in which different creatures float out of the graves depending on the ball contact with the bumpers. After analyzing the scene we know that the creatures always appear at the same places and the trajectory is always identical. What we don't know is when and in what combination they appear on the display. Accordingly, we would need thousands of individual keyframes, but the limit of the available masks alone would not allow us to capture all positions. Only the use of an LCM can help to master the seemingly impossible task. To get the situation under control, however, we need a scene with all possible positions of the individual creatures. In this case, it makes sense to use the Add to Scene button to collect all the necessary frames from the dump file in an LCM. When we've done that, we can start assigning the hashes. As I already mentioned, an LCM is able to map multiple hashes at the same time. And that is what we need in this case. We have to assign hashes for the background and for the individual creatures, while we have to make sure that we choose masks that cannot be disturbed by the other objects appearing on the screen, because that would cause uncolored frames. 
the simultaneous display of the different hashes inevitably leads to overlapping of the individual frames. This point is a little tricky, because there are some color priorities that need to be considered. Since this is a 16 color project, we have four color groups. The priorities of the colors in the case of overlaps are as follows. Groups 2 to 4 always override group 1. Group 4 overrides group 1, 2 and 3. And if group 2 and 3 overlap, group 4 comes out. At this point it should be ensured that the colors are assigned according to these priorities. For the current case and in general, group 1 should be used for the background because it has the lowest priority and the creatures must definitely be in the foreground. With this in mind, let's take a look at the scene and I'll explain how I went about it. In this frame I have colored the position of the left skeleton. It is important that everything except this skeleton has color group 1 so that no other areas of the screen are overwritten. For the skeleton I use color group 4, the one with the highest priority, so that all overlapping content is overwritten by these colors. Now let's see how I set the hash. To do this I activate the demask checkbox. If I now want to know which mask I'm using for the frame, I can switch through the mask until I see a tick next to a hash. A look at the hash at the bottom of the screen confirms that I have selected the correct mask. As usual, the mask used within an LCM scene is red, which means that it is locked. If we want to adjust it, we have to delete it using the delete button next to the mask checkbox. If the mask is also used by another frame, it will also be deleted there and must be recreated. Let's look at a frame for the background. In order to not waste masks unnecessarily, I colored the background together with a creature from the coffin. This made sense because the coffin kind of belongs to the background and also has several animated images. I also set the color for the score field and the counter here. As you can see, I assigned color group 3 to the counter and score so that color group 4 can override it. The skeleton will be at a certain point above the score and the counter. It can also overlap with the creature in the upper left thumb. For this reason I assigned color group 3 to this creature as well. When I activate the demask checkbox and switch to the used mask, you can see how I set the hash. The mask records the position of the coffin, which was obvious because there is no overlap with the other creatures and corresponding masks. The scene is triggered with a mask that only captures the static content of the scene and leaves out the numbers on the graves. It is not a problem to assign several keyframes for the same LCM scene, by the way, for some scenes it is even necessary, as they have different possible entry points depending on the gameplay. For this scene, this is not needed. As a second and last example, let's look at a scene that I converted from the previous method that I used to an LCM scene. The tunnel hunt scene requires an incredible number of possible combinations of the individual objects. I already reached my limits just to record all possibilities as a dump file. I used the add to scene button to combine my individual scenes into an LCM scene and colored each object with its possible positions. Due to the ability of the LCM scene to map several hashes, the chronological sequence of these positions no longer plays a role. I hope you could follow me. And now I have one more tool available to make your project clearer and to get difficult situations better under control. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon.